So he, he's, you know, he's proved to him that, you know, proved to the government there that he's formidable. <laughs> so not only that, he also wrote their computer, their computer programs for their defense. So they really can't push him too far. So, well, good luck. Uh, to, with, I, yeah, keep going. What's that? Oh, by the way, the question was, what was Ona? Ona, Ona is, we, we do not, and, and with my people, we do not say goodbye. It's basically when I see you again. That's what, oh, it's Ona Gateway. Yeah, it's wonderful. And, and wonderful. when we do it, that's because that's, it was a question the one time, and it was the last, the very last question. Well, that's what Ona means. It's, we don't say hello and goodbye. We say, you know, we have, we have, we have, greet, we greet people. Yeah, with Sego, it's actually Sego Skatagota. And then um, when, when we leave, we always say, Ona Gilwe. And, um, well, you know, we shorten everything. Just like reservations, the res. You going up to the res? Yeah, I'm going up to the res. You know, so everything's shortened, but... It's, now, I, know, have it's, some, I have some more material that I want to send to you, but I've been distracted in getting some of these um, uh, documents together into a, a PDF form. So it's, it's taking me a couple of weeks longer than expected, but I've got some more material to, to share with you. So I'll send it through, Ron, to you, yeah? Yes. Um, the one thing is, is that just this, just this life, since the, just this world takes 13 days to recite at a 10 hour, at a 10 hour period. Yeah. So, um, and I, and I have, I, I only have to get permission for one more, and that's Sid Hill, to be able to, but it still can, it cannot be recorded, but it can be, you know, done. And and they, they do it each year. They do it at winter, so, they do it at uh, winter, which is actually February. It's not, it's not at solstice. Yep. But they do it at Winterfest, and that's done then. But it would be nice to do it back, because it originally was Solstice, but because of uh, the world we live in, you know, and them being mostly what's called, a, most of them are what's called Handsome Lake, which is, uh, it's, it happened when a gentleman, which was Corn Planter's, uh, brother had a vision yeah. after, after a drunken deal and he's seen everything and switched the longhouse up. But, you know, I, I don't disagree with them. I just, you know, think that they should, you know, first before they switch things, go back and look, why did we do the other things that way? But it's well, okay. yeah, the, the, the thing is, and we'll talk more offline, yeah, and I promised I'll call you and I will call you. Um, the, the thing, just, just to wrap up from my end, on the call it, to you now is that just remind them that we are in a very important time where we need to honor and in the honor we need to look back to the first and the first is why the winter solstice you know we we look to the land but we look to the sun and if we think of what is happening uh, as a sign, we will see a sign at the end of this year. It may not be yes. a big sign, but it's still a sign. It's a sign that our ancestors knew, and they would see it as the crow's foot. They'd see it as the sign, yes? And yes. coming, there is coming something coming from that next year. So it, it is so, so important that we get back to the roots. Otherwise, our intent will not be as clear as it needs to be. There's a lot riding on it, Ray. There's a lot riding on it, getting it right. Yeah? I, I, have, the, I have the okay to the Lenape, the East Coast of Lenape, to pass you the Wanta Olam, Wanta Olam. Right. Which is translated into English. I want to see if I can get both versions and have them, you know, to where the words won't match up clearly, but it, it, it's the same exact wording. It's just made it so that English speakers can understand what we're saying. Right. We we don't speak the same way. We start we start off with a verb, 
and then, you know, go in and then use nouns. You know, we, we start with the action most of the time. Yeah. And then, you know, then, then you know, do, do everything else around it. But, yeah, All right. Well, look, I, I, will, I will call you to speak offline, but, but, again, thank you for everything you're doing. And um, if people don't realize that that's the doggies barking there, I'll just let them go, Lou. If people don't realize what you're doing uh, has enormous importance as what people are doing here in Australia and elsewhere in the world, enormous importance to our future. Thank you. Well, I would love to talk to the people from Australia because apparently the people which call themselves Lenape originate with them. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we can get... Yeah. So it would be nice to speak with them. Um, I think I think they would love to do it too. Um, so look, we'll talk a bit more offline. But is there anything else you want to cover? I, I won't add any more now. Is there anything else you want to say before we speak later? No, basically, you know, for people not to fear and remember it, nobody is better than anybody else. And I'll, and I'll constantly bring that to point out because the smallest spread of blade of grass has part of the creator in them, in it. So you know. Everything is important, and try to, you know, do the least impact you can on things. Okay? With that, Ona. Okay. Speak to you soon. Ona, Ray. All right. Ona. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so, uh, Frank, we got several questions over here on the chat, so let me uh, cover some of those. Um, do Next question, then, we have. Do you have to rebut presumptions one by one, or can you say, I rebut all your presumptions and then nullify all of their presumptions at once? Well, it would be nice if you could say that, because it would certainly save a lot of time, and I certainly would have uh, saved many years of reading. (laughs) Um, The way they do their magic, and it is is a, a, a piece of magic they do it, is uh, if you look at the 12, the 12 key presumptions uh, that we've listed under Canon 299, I think it is, um, it doesn't work that way. You, you actually, the way they view it is, if you don't know what the presumption is in their system, then simply saying I rebut all presumptions has no effect. And the way to think about it is, these people, whether they realize it or not, are coming from the Venetian Khazarian black magic cursing. So if you don't know the curse word, if you don't know the nature of the curse, then you can't defeat the curse. I mean, it, 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 it's, it is awful because one could say, well, how can I rebut something if I don't know it's there? That's precisely the point. That's, it's, it's not done for fairness. It's done for power. It's done for magic. So if you look at the list of 12 presumptions, you need to nail the presumptions. You need to rebut the presumptions in order to defeat them. One line in their system doesn't work. I wish it did. Okay. Well, that was wishful thinking, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, as I said, I would I would love it to be that way, but um, but I think the proof is, and if you think about it, uh, the proof is that they won't let you do that. Now, if if you go to court, and here's here's where I, I will give you an example where it does work. If you go to court and you can show competently, well, firstly, you, you, if you're the general executive, you shouldn't have to go to a court because if you go to court, you're going to a court of trustees. But if you act in the role properly, then absolutely you can kill all their presumptions by acting in the right role. So that's the, that's the answer to your question, yes. And all the presumptions then do dissolve. But if you're looking at simply going to court or finding yourself in a situation, you go, I rebut all presumptions, has no effect, none. Well, if you go into court, you would need to go into the judge's chambers as the occupant of the office of executor. It's all about um, right action. If mm-hmm. you act as the 
if you act as the um, correctly as the executor, then you'll be fine. But if you are still acting part executor, part trustee, then your protest of a one-liner is not going to work, unfortunately. Right. Okay. Let's see. We've got Ron back on the phone lines. We'll go to Ron real quick. Let's see. Ron, are you there? Hi, Terry. Hi, Frank. Hi. Hi, Ron. Hey, let's get off uh, a different subject. For the last two weeks, people are, well, Actually, scientists have been starting to identify this photon belt or this photon cloud that our solar system is about ready to enter, okay? And they're throwing out some numbers like it's every 25,000 years we eventually go into this charged particle cloud, right? Yep. But if you link that with the Eukadian date, you have nailed that thing. The eighth era... The year is 3210, and then we have, what, five months until December 21st? Yep. See, they're saying we're going to start entering the edges of that particle field in about two or three weeks. Yep. And then, apparently, the sun is going to go crazy. Yes, it will. Yep, because of the charged particles. Yep. Anyways, um, I don't know how you figured out that calendar, but... uh, it was great work. Well, I, I had a, a engineer, a wonderful fellow that came and just made sure, just doing a check, and there's a couple of things he said to um, how we uh, present it. But the calendar, everything in Eukadia uh, has come, I guess, from inspiration and from people um, sharing information. And I'm just trying to do the best I, I can in this. Uh, I just wanted... But, uh, we have so many new members on the call, they they might not know the origin of the Eukadian dating system. So I thought I'd just give... Yeah, people. well, the, the Eukadian time system is a system that actually kind of never really died. It, it has been there from, from day one. It is a recognition that our ancestors when they looked at the sky, didn't divide it into 12 uneven houses where some houses have no signs and others have all signs. Uh, They divided into eight. And it was all based on logic. It wasn't based on ritual or misinformation. Right. And they recognized seasons. They recognized the 19-year cycle of the moon. They recognized the the, uh, Venus. They recognized the cycle um, of the uh, sun, in terms of its um, um, breathing in and breathing out, and its 23-year cycles, they recognise all these different elements of the um, uh, sorry 11-year cycle. They, all these elements of our uh, solar system, and then they um, plan their calendars around it. And that's all that UK is doing. It's restoring a calendar that recognises the multiplicity of cycles, mm. the one that represents the season the one that represents the cycle of the moon, the one that represents the cycle of the sun, the one that represents the the, the greatest cycles of seasons in the procession of the equinox. So that's all we're trying to do in recognising Yukata, that we are part of a greater cycle. And for better or for worse, we are coming to the resetting of that cycle in a year's time. And that is a very exciting time. And uh, I think... uh, There'll be a few bumps in the road, but yeah, we're we're heading to a very exciting time. Right. Before you leave, Mm -hmm. how do we find all of the website links of the sites you have uh, authored? Is there a list? That that is an excellent question, and I think the best way to do that is probably to get on U of U and in a number of places a list. Uh, because, uh, as you know, there is a fair number of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I haven't so found we'll look... them all yet. Uh, yeah, well, I can't. Um, <laughs> I can't actually tell you how many there are. I think there's. I said to Girl? someone the other day, it's over sixty, but I think there's closer to eighty. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, so we'll get that list. Yep. 